Okay, so then you go back to the Phoenix Suns, and by that time, Charles Barkley had joined? Right. Okay. What was your relationship like with Charles Barkley? It's, it's more like just a, a work relationship, like, hey, what's up? Let's go to work like that. But every now and then, we'll have, we'll joke and stuff like that, because Charles liked to joke and all that. But me, I'm always been the type, I'm to myself. You know, I don't like to get caught up in all that. Charles liked the spotlight and stuff. That's why I, it made, it was perfect for me. I'm like, after the game, y'all go talk to Charles. I'm going to get out and out of here because I never really like crowds and stuff. Well, Charles had a very interesting reputation, uh, you know, off the court. Uh, I guess at one point he admitted that he used to eat McDonald's and just sit on a bike during practice when he played with the Sixers. <laughs> Did you see any of that when you were playing with him? He's, yeah, he came in a couple of times and told Paul Wesson, man, I ain't doing nothing today. I'm just going to ride the bike. I remember that. <laughs> he's told him that a few times. But you can't say nothing because game time, he's ready. I'm like, I don't want to say nothing. Okay. And when you rejoin the team, the Phoenix Suns just have a blockbuster season. Right, right. We actually had a, we had a great combination of players. Old players, young players. You, you got to think about it, man. We had a bunch of all-stars, uh, ex-all-stars on our team with KJ, Marley, Chain, then uh, Danny Ainge, Tom Chambers, Charles Bar. So we had, and then we had young players, Cedric, me, Oliver. Mark, I mean, we had a great mixture, and we learned how to work together with it. And we all knew how each other played. Well, that season, you averaged uh, 15.8 points, uh, 4.6 rebounds. And uh, the team got 62 wins, which was like, a, I think, a league record at that point. It was. And you guys make it to the playoffs, and then you guys make it to the finals. How did it feel? Because, you know, here you are. One of your goals is to make it to the NBA, but your real goal is to win, at the, is to win a finals. So here you are. With a superstar team, you, Charles Barkley, uh, playing Michael Jordan and the Bulls. How did it feel before the before the uh, the finals even started? Well, for me, I took basketball. I, I always took basketball the same way. I never really got too excited or overwhelmed about it because if you prepare yourself, which I always did, you, you have confidence to go out there and play. So I wasn't nervous. It's just the only thing that bothered me is like. As it'll come up later on, like, I, see, I suffered from a, a mental illness to where I can't deal with crowds and stuff like that. So, you know, I, 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 they got me on medication now, but they didn't have medication and stuff back then. So I like, I couldn't deal with all that stuff. See, a lot of people don't know I had a six pack before every game. Really? Yeah. A whole six pack? Yeah. <laughs> About 12 o'clock. Okay. But... But with my imbalance, because once I found out, I needed something to calm me down because I, I, what I suffered from, I didn't like loud noises. I didn't like bright lights and I didn't like crowds. That, those things irritated me. But I'm playing NBA where you got bright lights, you got crowds, you got lots of noises. So I needed some way to just keep it out of my mind. So I have a six pack and just be, let's go play. But I've been doing that ever since I was 15, though. Well, when you came back to the Phoenix Suns after doing rehab, did you keep taking drugs or did you totally stop? No, I didn't do the drugs then, no. I still had my six pack, though. Okay, so you were just alcohol at that point. Yeah, I was just drinking it. But I wasn't drinking to get drunk. I was drinking it just so I can go play. Because if, yeah. if I don't drink, I, it's a psychological thing with me. I, if I don't have nothing to calm my nerves, I don't. I can't play basketball. I actually don't even like it, cause I I get so irritated to where I beat myself up to where I don't even want to play no more. So I, I I needed something for that crutch, cause I know I'm good at it. Even though I know I'm good, I just keep beating myself up. So I have I just drink a six pack. I'm like it was like medicines and just keep me calm, and nothing would bother me. Well, leading up to the finals, had you faced off uh, against Jordan before or no? I think we had one. I think I missed that game. I think I was hurt or something. 
I don't have to. Re- I don't really remember. I think we only played them once before then. I remember. Only, I think I only played them once before then. Okay, but you never got on the court with them before. Nah, not that I remember. No. Okay, and you know back then Jordan was kind of the face of the NBA. Oh, I know. I know. John Starks and I in college used to sit there and watch his watch his games. He he'd take the games and take all the commercials out and right before we go to practice we sit there and watch the game <laughs> so we kind of okay. study him at, during college he already getting prepared for him right and then uh scotty pippen is also on the same team uh so the final start and you're pretty much matched up with pippen actually uh paul put me on bj armstrong he put marley on pippen and then no, nah, he put uh uh KJ, I think, on I forgot the first game. I think the first game I did have Pippen, but later he switched KJ to Jordan and took Marley off of Jordan and put KJ on my on Michael, and then Marley moved to Scotty, and then I moved to BJ. Making adjustments. Okay. How was that first finals game? Actually, it's just like another, uh, it was a normal day to me. I mean, it was kind of okay, but I'm like, it really didn't, it wasn't that exciting, exciting, because I'm like, I, I felt I deserved to be there. I think the biggest part was somebody tried to uh, burn my ex-wife's hair in the stands, because my mother and my ex-wife and my sister and my aunt was there, and somebody, and they were cheering, they was trying to burn my wife's hair. Okay, that's crazy. <laughs> what was it like to play to play with Jordan on the court at that point? <laughs> Everybody asked me that question, and they're gonna know my answer. They have always ask me how it was it playing against Mike. I always respond, ask Mike how it was it playing against me. Cause I never got caught up like that. I'm like, it's just another game to me. I always had that mentality. I mean, I wasn't at okay. all starstruck or nothing like that. Like, wow, I'm like this. I'm like, oh, I got, I get the GOAT now. I get you. I get to play against the best now. Let's go. That's how I felt. Well, the final start, game one, uh, the Bulls win 192. After that first game, how did you feel about the rest of the series? Actually, after that first game, I, it felt like the – I'm like, ah, oh, here we go, the Los Angeles Lakers series again. Because remember, we lost our first two games against them. So it was like, well, we're going to have to, we got, we're in for a fight, but it's just one game. It's just one game. Okay. We just got to win another, the next one. Well, game two, the Bulls win again, 111 to 108. A little more close this time. I know. I don't know what it was about the playoffs. We did better on the road than at home. We shouldn't have had the best home record. We may have won it. <laughs> Maybe if we were playing on the road all the time. Because I don't know what it was. They, I don't know what it was. I don't know if everybody was just excited to be in the playoffs or just still in. I don't know what it was. Me, I just wanted to play. I was like, man, it's just play. It ain't, it's just, y'all want to be a champion? Let's get out there and play. Well, game three, you guys win. 129 to 121. Triple overtime. Triple overtime. Uh, Michael Jordan scored 44 in that game. So he was he was doing his thing, but you guys still won it. Right. Uh, so then game four, Chicago wins, 111 to 105. Right. Jordan got 55 that game. I know. Jordan's someone who just hates losing. I mean, you know, everyone hates losing, but Jordan really hates losing. Yeah. And he don't, he's one of these guys that he, he won't pass the ball. <laughs> he, he just give it to Jordan. He's going to take over the game. So now it's getting, it's getting almost to the end there uh, because Chicago now has three to one in the series. They need one more. And then game five rolls around and that's when you really start to shine. Right. I didn't want to go home. I didn't want to do the quit. I'm like, I just needed to be out there. If a, well, if a lot of people, if they watch the playoffs, they know 
first quarter, most of the time in the first quarter, I was on fire. But then you ne never really heard from him the rest of the game because he'll put somebody else in, I guess, from experience or whatever. But every time when the game was on the line, he left me in the game and I produced. The Lakers, the same thing. When we went to L.A., had to win the game, he left me in. We won. Yeah. Well, you win uh, game five, 108 to 98. And then it gets down to game six. And the Bulls win by one point. John Pax. 99 to 98. John Pax. Yeah. Um, How heartbreaking was that? By one point. I actually cried that day. I actually, I really felt the emotions of that game that day because I'm like, I just knew we had that game. I'm like, if we go to overtime, we're going to have it. But for them to just, that was just a smart, that was a well-developed play. They draw us all in there. Wouldn't, didn't nobody think Paxson would take the winning shot, let alone a three-point shot to win it. But I'm like, that, that's, that's one of the hurt feelings I ever had when I was on the basketball court. So you actually broke down and cried right there, huh? Yeah. That took a piece of my heart right there. I'm like, hey, it's like I'm about to accomplish my goal and you just took it from me. Yeah. I mean, uh, it must have been tough. Yeah. It must have been really tough. Uh, how badly did Barkley take it? I remember, I think he cried too. I'm trying to remember, I think he may have cried too. Just to be so close, we've been working for it so hard. Cause I figured if it was a game seven, I think we would really been ready. But yeah, I mean, because Barkley went on to be one of the greats who never got a ring. Right. Got you know, know that. So he he was never he was never able to actually get a you know get right. a trophy. I know. And trust me, and that's why he hears about it all the time too. Because they know he talks a bunch of noise, but they're like, yeah, but we got all the hardware. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Where's your ring, Charles? Yeah. That's what I thought. And when him and Shaq go at it. All the time. <laughs> Shaq, Shaq could always pull that one out of his hat. Like, oh, really? How many rings you got? <laughs> yeah. And Charles can't say nothing, though. That, can't that's, say a, nothing. that's the ring every time. He can mess with I, I'm going to shut Charles up. How many rings you got? And <laughs> Charles... <laughs> Yeah, and you said that uh, the game five in the finals, that was your greatest uh, NBA moment ever. Yeah, because it was like the game is on the line. You're in the spotlight. You're playing against the, the supposedly the best player in the world, and you got to win that game. And, and to have a good game like that, something you worked your whole life for, yeah. Of course, winning a championship would have made it even better, but... That was one of the biggest days of my life when it came right there. Well, uh, in an interview, you, you talked about Jordan. You said uh, a lot of people look at basketball as an athletic sport. They don't understand that basketball is 90% mental. Michael Jordan was just smart at the game. He knew how to play the game. It was right. hard to stop him because of that. And to have the athletic ability on top of that, that made it even worse. That's, that's true. Look at Le They say about LeBron James, he's one of the smartest players there. But look at his size. He's one of the biggest, too. That's why. But he's smart and knows what, what to do. Like you said, the reason I say that is because you look back in the history of the NBA, there weren't a lot of athletic players, but there were some great players. Larry Bird is a perfect example. He wasn't athletic at all, but he could kill you. <laughs> he knew how to play the game. <laughs> he was one of those oh, types. Yeah. I mean, we interviewed Amon Shumpert, you know, who played with LeBron. And he said the LeBron superpower is his basketball IQ. He said that, you know, after the game, someone will ask him about a certain play and he'll break down everyone that was on the court, exactly what they did, how they did it. You know, he said that, you know, he'll sit there and study people uh, and find out exactly what percentage they shoot from different areas. And that's how he'll know how to react uh, on the court. And yeah, man, it is mental. Yeah, that's, it. What, that's what the same stuff I went to because... Now, I was growing up, uh, I had a big brother, as we had having a big brother, big sister. And he had taught me, he said, all that stuff you see on the TV, see, you see all them dunks and all that and the fancy dribbling. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He said, 
figure out how they did that though. That's what you need to work out, how they getting those dunks, how they getting in position to get those dunks, how he's getting over those picks. Listen to what the commentators are saying, They're like the back door and all that. See, most of the kids now just so caught up in the fancy dribbling, shooting threes and dunking that they, they, they miss all the fundamentals of the game. Yeah.